action, educating and empowering you into action. This is Warriors Talk with your host, Lady Rochelle. Hello, hello. Welcome to Warriors Talk with author and founder, Lady Rochelle, where we move away from awareness towards action. This is Relationship Monday, and we are live on Intellectual Radio. We just heard from Roman with the Drive at Five. Keep it locked right here on Intellectual Radio and allow us to feed your brain. The show is being sponsored by Emmanuel Church of God in Christ with Pastor Michael Richardson. We are located at 3058 West Van Buren in Chicago. We are still practicing social distancing. You can catch the Word of God every Sunday morning at 1015 a.m. on our Facebook page, Emmanuel Kojic. The quote of the day is, sometimes you have to walk away from what you want in order to get what you deserve. Co-hosting with me today is none other than cancer activist, motivational speaker, and the founder of the Gal Foundation, Rizal Gilmore. Hello, Rizal. Hello, Lady Michelle. How are you? I'm very excited. It's Relationship Monday. I love these days. I love Relationship Monday. We always have a great time, and we always run out of time. Always. So our topic for today is Friend Zone, the raw truth. So we're going to talk about how you know that you are friend zone. So first, let's get out the way. What's the definition of someone who is friend zone? So a friendship in which one person is romantically or sexually attracted to the other person, but the attraction is not mutual. All right. So what does it mean to be put in the friend zone? First of all, um, I wanted to ask the question, Rizal, have you ever been put in the friend zone? Yes, I have. More than once. Then. Okay, and how did that make you feel? It's not a good feeling. It to me, it's kind of like a gift and a curse. Um, because either God could be saving you from something by being put in the friend zone, or every person that you meet, you're not supposed to be romantically involved in. You may have an interest, but some people are just best as friends. And you could be dodging a bullet. So it's a gift and a curse for me, but I think any man or woman who's like really attracted to a person and their intentions is good and their agenda is for the best and everything, and if you just have somebody just say, I think we're just better off as friends. That kind of just knocked the wind right out of you. It's almost like a box and we just got hit with that right hook and down go crazy. It's not a good feeling. We never want to hear that because you build yourself up to get to that point and then you get there just to hear friends. No, that's not what you want. <laughs> that's not what you're looking for. So do you do you stick around? Did you stick around after that or did you just like, oh, I'm going my own way? No, I did stick around because before in any relationship, I think you should be friends first before jumping into a relationship. This gives you a chance to learn the person because we got too many people who's practicing convenience instead of practicing chemistry and connection. And this is why these relationships are lasting. So I do believe in being friends. But let's talk about taking it to the next level somewhere along the way. At least you know what my interests are, that I have a romantic interest in. If that's not it, then we can always go back to what we are, and that's friends. Wow. Hey, Shanara. Um, if you are tuned in on any social media, please like and share this video. Invite somebody else in on the video so that they can um, give their opinion and get some of this information. So Rizal said that he has been friend zone and in the friend zone, he's learned to state what it is that he wants. And, you know, because you need, you should be friends, first of all, you should be friends, but you shouldn't be friends waiting for an opportunity to like slide in there. That's, that's my whole thing is that if we're going to be, if we're going to be true friends, then let's be true friends. But if you're going to be a friend that's in waiting, like as soon as something go wrong with my relationship, then you like right there, like, hey, yeah, you should be with him. No way. He's no okay. good. 
Oh yeah, that's that's. I'm gonna say it's about at least eighty-three percent of the men wait for that opportunity, especially they have an interest for something to go wrong. So they're like, "He did what? No, bro, come here. Let me comfort you. It's not going to be okay. Like, look, he don't know what he's missing out on." And he's like, "Yeah, man." So, yes. I totally, I totally agree with you. Um, I was listening to different podcasts um, this weekend about friend zone. And a lot of them said men and women can be friends, that men are not wired to be a friend to a woman because in the, they're always waiting for that opportunity. Like if I was to call the guy up that I've been friends with for a while and be like, hey, you know, me and my boyfriend just broke up. Can you, you know, I need some loving. Can you come over here? They was like 80% of them be like, here I am. I'm on the way. They will go for it. So it's like, you know. 97%. 97%. 97%, I'm quite sure. So if someone tells you, if you're a friend, if you like somebody and you want more than a friendship with them, then the first thing you should do is you should state that. You should be upfront with your true intentions of what it is that you want. And then if that person says, no, nope, I just want to be friends, then where do you go from there? Well... For me, and this is what I call it, again, that opportunity, I call it putting it on layaway. So if we become friends, we could be friends for two, three, five years. But somewhere down the line, whether it's 20 years or 22 years, if I get an opportunity, knowing that my feelings has been there for that time or whatever, yes, I'm going to try to slide. I'm going to try to slide through. But within that amount of time, time goes by, sometimes you lose the thrill and you learn, you actually, by that time, you've actually gained a true friend because now you, they get to open up to you more about different things that they might have not opened up to you if you were in a relationship or looking toward those things. So that's the, you know, the gift and the curse thing again. Yeah, I, yeah, that's sneaky. Like, you're going to pretend to be my friend, and then I'm opening up telling you different things about what I like, what I don't like, what I'm doing with probably other guys. Because if you're my friend, then I'm going to open up and tell you stuff like that. So the pretend friend is what I'm going to call it, sitting back, collecting all the information, and then you shaking your head, too. And then going to use it on no, me. No, no, no. I, oh, and then use it on me at a, a time when I'm at my lowest. Well... Understand, Lady Rochelle. I'm trying. A lion always watches the prey before it goes in for the kill. No okay. <laughs> I appreciate you being honest. I'm hoping that um, other people are listening. Women. <laughs> <laughs> so you're entering into this. They're telling you, okay, I just want to be friends. And it's like, okay, why not just walk away and be like, nope, that's not what I want. So since I can't get what I want, I'm just not going to, I'm not going to be the friend because I want to be more than friends. Why not just, you know, stick to your guns? And if you can't get what you want, then, you know, I don't want to be your friend. I'm out of here. Because then you're watching her or him with other people. And it's like, you know, you feel in some type of way. I'm thinking like resentment or something is building up in you because you're sitting there, you know, watching this person. Maybe people love on her, treating her bad or treating him bad. And then you're sitting there like, mm -hmm. if that was me, if I get my chance. I'm no, sorry, because I think a lot of my, a lot of men feel as though they can treat you better than the person in whom you're with. So they try to show you that. And that's actually where they go wrong. Because you don't have to show anybody anything. All you have to do is be yourself. And if they love who you are, then they're going to love on you. So whether you're in friend zone or not, just be you. And it's going to happen naturally for you. You don't have to pretend or you don't have to uh, uh, guess that, well, look, if she was with me, I'll be doing X, Y, and Z. If you are the man for her and you are friends beforehand, she's going to know all of this, what you need what she needs to know before entering into that relationship because women are cautious before being with a man. And I respect y'all for that. 
But I think some men has become hip and we become cautious. We don't, especially when you get older, we don't just go around sticking and moving like we used to. Well, at least I don't. I, I need to know you. I need to understand you. I need to learn you. So that's the difference, you know, as far as friends when you get older, because now you've really learned this person and your feelings are a little bit different. Like, you know what? Yeah, I can't just be friends. I like something. Else. It's better off that way of just being friends. So you think you think most people come to that conclusion? Or most people are just sitting around waiting for their opportunity to slide right on in there? Both. Oh, okay. I, I'm glad that your options I, I, are resolved. I can't yeah. think of like what the percentage could be. I could say it could be 50-50, it could be 60-40, but I definitely can say at least half of the people is waiting. And I'm only speaking for the men. Sometimes I speak to the women. But for the men, I could say at least 50% would be waiting for that opportunity, whether it's down the line or whatever, you're getting put on layaway. And yes. 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 Okay. So I've heard that men, that women often put men in the friend zone and that men often put women in situationships. Don't go silent on me now. No, no, no. If I'm watching, thinking about if that. Watching this show, I'm processing please it. Li like and share this show. We're live on Intellectual Radio and we're talking about friend zone, the raw truth. And I know a lot of us have been friend zone. Um, yeah. You know what? The last time I can remember being friend zone is when I was in eighth grade. Seriously. I thought about it today. I, I did. I thought about it today. And I'm like, try, I tried to think about the last time I was friend zone. And it was when I was in eighth grade. And reason why is because I'm not the type of person to I'm, I, if I want to be with you, I'm not gonna sit around you and watch you be happy with somebody else. I, I can't do it. I can't do it. So if you say, okay, we could we could just be friends, and I'm gonna be like, yep, from a distance because I'm going over here, and I'm not about to hang around you. I'm not about to allow you to use me. I'm not about to allow you to come cry on my shoulder. I'm not about to you. You're not about to call me, be like, hey, I need a hundred dollars. You know, I got a flat. Call that call that woman you with. This is not this is not that. Well, can you say that? Were you being a true friend if he can't come to you for these things? Okay, we not. First of all, we not like if I like you, we we probably wasn't friends to begin with. Like if I if I saw you around and said, oh, he's kind of cute. I kind of like him, and then I. I don't, I don't step to men. I don't. For some reason, if I were to say, you know, let you know that I, I like you, we're probably not friends at that point. So if you, if you say, hey, well, you know what, you know, I really only see you as a friend. I'm not hanging around. I'm not. So how about the women? It seems as though they, I, I guess it would be misleading. They, they give you the signs like, okay, I know you're interested and they're flirting back with you. And then boom, it's like they snatch the rug from under you. And like, no, nah, I don't see you that way. Why go through the motions of giving me, you know, giving me some feedback, giving me something and you're just gonna snatch the rug from under me. You know what? People people do that. People call the, and they think it's like harmless flirting, but you know, the other person may be taking it serious. You know, I don't I don't even do that. I'm not going to sit and pretend if if it's nothing there, I'm not going to pretend like it is. Because I try to take into account that that person has feelings and because I don't want it being done to me. So, so how do you so how do you tell the person without telling them that they're in the friend zone because I think friend zone it comes as a feeling. I don't think it comes like, you know, if I came to you, you know, hey, Lady Michelle, you know, you're looking real good in that blue dress the other day. You know, I might want to cross the line. You say, nope, your friend zone. Like, do you really just come out and say, nope, no. your friend zone? Or there, there, it has to be a certain way that you deliver it because that would be a little harsh to say, no, your friend zone. And again, that's that, that blow is just hitting you like, oh my God, I just, I'm looking like the Tweety Birds going around my head. Yeah. Sometimes it, it sometimes it can just be your actions. And if I know that you're the type of person that you're telling everybody that they look nice and I hear you doing it, 
then I'm not going to take you seriously. And so, yeah, I may be like, oh, thank you, Rizal. I appreciate that. And it may seem flirty, but I just saw you do it to about four or five other women. So I'm not going to take you seriously. And I'm, I'm hoping you're not going to take me serious by me saying that. So it just, I mean, you have to just read the person, you know, and to see if they're serious or not and what type of feedback they're giving you. Because some people will try to lead you on. They'll try to use you and get stuff out of you. So they can call you and, and have you doing stuff for them and make you feel guilty. Oh, and then if you go somewhere with them, they're going to they're gonna make sure that they say, oh, yeah, this is my friend Rizal. This is my friend. And you just like, yep, I'm her friend. Just wait mm -hmm. for my turn. Let's slip on in there. And like you and said, then, mm -hmm. and you were honest. Like you said, pe people will wait. They will wait. They'll wait 10, 15 years if they have to for that chance just to slip in. They'll pretend like they're your your boyfriend's friend or your girlfriend's friend. Just, oh yeah, I'm just a friend. Like to wait so that they won't be thinking anything. But then you're the person that's always getting pushed to the side. Like what if that person say, you got to cut that friend off and you've been there for that person. And now they want that person to cut you off. They're going to choose that person over you. Of course, because that's what they're dealing with at that moment in time. But you have to think too, well, look, me and this guy for girl, we've been friends for this long. It's been 12 years. He's a good friend. Do I choose my friendship over this guy who I just started talking to for three months? Which one is more important? You know, I, I think when it comes down to relationship and friends, especially if they've been around so long, I don't I'm not quite sure why women sometimes feel there's a threat. Or why men feel like there's a threat of another guy. He's been around this long and you ain't give him no, no play or, or anything. Because well, men, because men, not to cut you off, because mm -hmm. men know how they are. So if they see another guy hanging around their girl, they know how they are. So of course, they're going to feel threatened. So does this explain why women are so territorial? Men and women are. Thank you so much, Charlene, for sharing the show. I appreciate it. For you guys that are listening, please like and share this show so we can get the comment. I appreciate it. Yes, comment because we and comment. Comments. Give us some feedback. Let us know if we, if we talking some real. Are we talking the raw truth tonight? Yes. Let us know if you ever been friend zoned. So here's my thing. Like, if I'm with a guy, I'm not gonna have another guy hanging around me. You know, and I'm not going to be hanging around another guy because I don't want him to feel some type of way. So I'm not going to put him in a position to, to even think that anything is going on with me and somebody else. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because I don't want him to be hanging around another girl and, you know, oh, that's just my friend. A lie? That's no. <laughs> a lie. We're not doing that. <laughs> Well, it was, uh, was good for the goose, it was good for the gander. And that's why I wouldn't do it, so that you won't have an excuse to do it. No, let, let's set the tone right now. We're not doing that. Charlene said, especially when they have low self-esteem. Hello? You don't want to do that to nobody. It has. I mean, your, your relationship is going to go crazy. And Lisa says, it goes both ways. Absolutely. It does go both ways. And I think it's unfair to play with somebody's feelings if you don't want, if you just want to be friends, then don't don't use them to do it, especially if they said that I have an interest in you. I would try to, I would distance myself from them so that I wouldn't be tempted to play with their feelings or to use them. I think I would I would distance myself and that way it would be like, you know, okay. You because you will, you'll be tempted to be, you'll call them up, you're going somewhere, hey, come go to this party with me, let's go. Hey, come go over here with me. You just find your little self dragging around this person all the time. And every time that person introduces you, guess what? Oh, this just my friend. And and you see guys and or girls going in and out their life, and you're always the friend, but never good enough to be in that number one spot. <clears throat> And too afraid to have that conversation with that person to say, hey, why not me? Why you not picking me? I seen you with five other guys that done dumped you, treated you bad. And each time you done cried on my shoulder, they done emptied out your bank account, wrecked your car. And you still just choosing over me. Yep. yep. Ooh, Lisa says safety zone. That is so true. This right here goes 
Well, this is a question that we need to ask. Can men and women be friends without sex being involved? I'm, okay, my opinion is no. That's This is just my opinion. I would think if it was somebody maybe I grew up with and we, we started off as kids, you know, we grew up and there was never anything there. We never even flirted with the idea. I mean, and then, I mean, I'm a woman, you a man. So, you know, we get attracted to each other. Yeah. So, and that's the reason why you, you have boundaries. So I, I think that, honestly, I think you probably can be, but you have to have boundaries. I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Because as you get older, like I said, hey, I never, it might be a time of life where I've never seen you in this type of light, where you're looking good in that blue dress. And it's like, wow, like, why I never noticed you before. But as you said, that you engage one, two, three, four, five guys before a chance, but you never gave me a chance. What is it or what isn't it about me that you're not attracted to? Have you really truly gotten a chance to know me or to know who I am? And if we're friends, I hope that you have to understand who I am. And I think a lot of men and women, we tend to turn away from God actually sent for us. And then you're talking to your friend like, oh my God, this guy did this. You know, what is God doing to me? Why can't he send me the, the man who I ordered? And sometimes that man or woman is going to come in the form of what you think that he is, then he's just going to send you exactly what you need. So you can't deny the person that God sent to help you. Well, I would like to think if I'm asking my heavenly father for what I want and I'm detailed, I'm giving him details of what I want. And he said, ask and it shall be given. And I'm asking and I'm seeking. I would think that he would give me what I'm asking for. As long as it's within his will. I mean, understand the, I understand the theory of what they say was for you is for you and who has and, and who God has for you, that's who you're going to be with and so on and so on. But sometime down the line, that guy that was actually pursuing you and you see him two, three years down the line and you're like, Damn, you know what? He's now giving this young lady everything that I wanted. I wonder if I would have stopped and actually took the time to not put him in friends zone or really took the time to get to know him. That could have been my prayers answered all along. He was probably it. It was something about him that just you just didn't like. It was well, something about listen, that person. But you're going to listen to yourself or you're going to listen to God? I would hope that God would be guiding me. This is my thing. Because a lot of guys will come to you and say, hey, you know, God said that you my wife. A lie. You know, <laughs> no. And uh, men use, especially men in the church. That's why I don't, I don't like to date men in the church. That's what they do. They will tell you that. And these gullible women will fall for it. And here you out here with this jack of all trades telling you that God sent, God sent him. And then, then you miss all the other men that all the other guys that maybe should have been, could have been because you, you listening to him using that on you. So when somebody, when somebody said God sends you somebody, God doesn't choose our mates. We do. God give us free will. We choose our mate. Yeah. He probably sent the, sent the person, but again, like you said, you might not have chose that person. You know, there was something about that person. She was heavy into church. And we're still friends to this day. And for the longest time, like, look, I was been trying to get with the child. And she said, I need to just, I need to pray on you. She'd been praying on it for about four years. At least four years. At least four years. She need to pray on you. If she haven't gotten the answer yet. I, I don't know what to say. You know, it's, it's, it's done. That window, that moment, that window is now closed. It's, it's gone. We're still friends. But this is what I'm saying. Sometimes you might just be better off. And I think sometimes the hesitation and the procrastination on people instead of rolling the dice, and, you know, saying, you know what? Let me take a chance. This might be it. You never know. I agree. And that's why I said be upfront. Don't be hanging on the side like, yeah, I just want to be your friend. 
and then you waiting to slide in there. If you want to be more than friends, be up front and say, hey, girl, I'm checking for you. What's up? You know, and, and don't try to have ulterior motives, you know, be up front and you'll be surprised. She may be like, all right, you know, let's do this. But a lot of times you want to sit on the side and you want to wait thinking that she's going to recognize that you are this awesome person with this, these awesome qualities. And she like, mm -mm. she just, she's just walking over you, using you. And eventually you don't waste your time with her. Then you don't let women pass over because you sitting in the friend zone. Don't no woman want to be with you. And you got some other woman over there and, and you know, she looking like, nope, not going to do that. Okay, let me read some of these comments because they coming in, y'all. Okay, so well, we'll see, that's what that's what I'm talking about. Yes. Let's, let's get to the nitty gritty because I got more to come. Oh Lord. So yeah, um Lisa said, yes, we can. However, we should not play with fire. Um, all of those times should not be spent together. Oh, okay. Lisa's like, don't spend all that time with my person. Um, Daryl says, I have a female friend whom I never dated, and I look at her as family. Okay, see, some people, I mean, <laughs> I, I believe that it can be done. You just have to have boundaries. You have to have boundaries. Um, Charlene said, and he will just wait on God. You have to wait. You do have to wait on God. And see, you may think that, oh, I'm this awesome guy. Why isn't she choosing me? God sent me. And God like, I ain't confirmed that. I did not confirm that. And if God didn't confirm it, if we feel like we heard from God, we ain't moving. We ain't moving. And so you got to be in, you have to be in tune. You have to be in tune with God. And then at the same time, women, the same time, women, the same list that we had at the age of 20, we should not have that same list at the age of 50. Some of that stuff been done. Drop, drop it all. Drop it all. You know, stop trying to hold these men to these standards that you can't even hold. You want him to bring all this stuff to the table and you can't even bring half of that stuff to the table. So That's some right. things that you wanted when you was 20, you ain't going to get when you 50. Why? Because the men 50 checking for the women 20. So check your list. Check it out. Okay. That list needs to be getting a little bit shorter. And I'm not, this more. Yes, and I'm not saying settle. I'm not saying that you have to settle, right? And I'm not saying that you have to, you know, erase your standards. Yeah, your core values should always be there. But things like, oh yeah, he needs to be, he needs to be six foot two, you know, a hundred and two hundred pounds, you know, with a beard, you know, light skinned it. <laughs> the light skinned it. Right. Come on, y'all. Come on. I'm gonna need y'all to get it. Yes, that list needs to be getting shorter. And just like you said, the things what you just mentioned, I've actually come across. And I've actually seen, not you know, just from from my point, but from other people's point, went through the same thing. Women got on saying, when you get 50, like you said, men are checking for women that's now younger. You 50, you're not dropping it hot like you used to. He over there looking like, oh, Miss Parker, Miss Parker. <laughs> so you, you got to start to think. You're getting older, and you, you're now at the point like, man, nobody snatched me up yet. you almost at the point where you almost take anything. That's the convenience. Wow. It says, um, Tonya, I hope that's her name. It says, she said, ask and it shall be given, but you do not always know what's best for you. Some have passed up, and this is what you've been saying, Resolve. Some has passed up their perfect mate because he or she did not check off, did not check off one of their boxes. Ladies, you got to erase the boxes, erase some of them. You do not always know what's best for you. I totally agree with that. I totally agree. We don't know. We, you know, and we have this list thinking that, you know, we want the, and it'd be superficial things on the list, right? You know, superficial things that you have on this list that, you know, probably God himself can't even do. And then we get mad and we start, we do, we pass up these amazing guys because they don't look physically like what we want. But are mm -hmm. you there though? Are you there? You know, check your list and, and you know, measure it up against yourself. Are are you there? Mm -hmm. Look, that ugly look, that ugly dude is going to treat you better than that handsome dude that's out there with the other five, seven, five, five, seven men, women, or whatever. They're going to have to be pleasing to the eye. I'm sorry. You're going to have to be pleasing to the eye. That's, that's one of the things I ask God for. 
God, allow him to be pleasing to my eye because I don't want to roll over in the middle of the night and I got to put a bag on you just so we can be intimate. <laughs> no, we just do it in the dark all the time. Turn off the light, baby. Don't turn the light on. No, we're we not doing that. But then you still got to go out in public with him. Then what? I'm not. That's what I'm saying. He so has it's to like be you're, you're to never going to be. Yeah, you're, it's like you're never going to be happy. And I'm not saying he has to be a Rick Fox. If y'all found Rick Fox sexy, I don't. If you know, have to be a Rick Fox. But I'm just saying he should be pleasing to the eye. Somebody that you want to look at. You know, I'm not saying you you going out here. And, you don't have. I mean, he should be. He should be. He or she should be pleasing to the eye. Um, Lisa says some of them needs a return stamp. Oh Lord. Put them back, Lisa. Lisa said, mm -mm, you got to go. A lot of times, don't get suckered into, don't get suckered into, um, I have to lower my standards in order to be with somebody. Because you don't. You don't. I don't think it's lowering the standards. I think that'll be shortening your list a little bit. Yes. Because a lot of things that you, would, you wouldn't tolerate before, you're now overlooking those things. Like, you know what? I want his six foot, but he's five eight, and he's good to me. Why not? I can go for that. Just but me. women are like, no, you need to be like six foot and point one centimeter, like on the dot. Oh, I need to be looking up to you because I need to feel secure. You don't think that I could that make you feel secure at, at the height of where I'm at? Where I'm at? You want to miss over a good dude because you got a height requirement? Rise at Great Adventure has a height requirement. I don't. Go ahead. I see you ready to go. No, go no. ahead. I'm just laughing at these comments. Um, Charlene says, I sure did, I sure did the fool. So guilty. <laughs> <laughs> see? Oh my goodness. If you guys are just if you're just tuning in, this is Warriors Talk with Lady Rochelle and the Biz. And we're talking about being friend zoned. And I know many of us have probably been friend zoned, whether you've known it or not. Um, so do me a favor. If you haven't already shared this show, please like and share the show. Invite somebody else in on the show. We're um, live sharing this information on Intellectual Radio. So um, thank you for sharing your comments. We appreciate it. She says, um, Tonya says, free will is real. When I tell you free will, God is not going to twist your arm for you to do anything. She said, that's why so many people choose wrong. They are choosing based on their will. God ain't going to say, um, choose, he ain't going to put a gun up to your head asking you to do nothing. That's why you're supposed to be in tune with him. You're supposed to be praying and asking for direction. And lady, he gives us, he gives us that gut instinct. And a lot of times we turn it off. We don't use it. Stop mm -hmm. ignoring those red flags. Do we do it? Because you see me making googly eyes, like, oh my God, he's, he, he's gorgeous and this and that, not knowing that He's, he's an abuser or, or, or something like that. Is it true that women should be with a man who's obsessed with them? Oh, that's, I don't know if that's a good thing. I was always told that, that you should, the man should love you. You don't necessarily have to love him. Like you can learn to love the man, but you should be with somebody with a man that loves you. But you got so many men out there who would do anything to be your everything. I think I got that from you. And yet women don't see the good qualities that this man has because they also bring a lot of the baggage from past relationships. And they're, they're thinking like, well, no, I don't want this this time. I don't want that this time. But it's totally different because this is a new man. You need to give him a new slate. You need to start fresh and just get to know him. And that's what the whole friendship thing is all about. So being friends zone sometimes isn't bad because being that she's hurt, she's liable to hurt you. So you just dodge the bullet, gift and the curse. My thing is don't, I mean, if you, this is my thing. If you, if you're interested in that person, then be vocal about it. Be vocal about it. Be upfront about it. Don't just sit to the side and be like, okay, I'm just going to wait for her to break. No, you tell her, be vocal about it so that she knows. And I do agree. I do agree with being friends first, right? Okay, let's just be friends. Let's build a friend. That's different than being friend zone, than you actually building a friendship with somebody. That's totally different. You should build a friendship with somebody that you're trying to get to know or whatever so that 
you know, I want to be friends with my husband. I, I want to be his best friend. I don't want him to have a female best friend. That's, hey, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, he can have friends, but I should be that best friend, you know? I, some people don't agree with that. Like, no, you know, you don't have to be best friends with your husband. Why not? I'm sleeping with this person every night. I'm with this person all the time. Why can't we be best friends? And then that's why a lot of marriages don't work and they fall because you were never friends, you know, and you grow old, you don't even like this person. You're like, I don't even like this person because you don't know the person. But I think it's a little bit different when your best friends because when your best friends or your friends, you feel as though you can share and you can tell them anything. Like I have four female best friends. I talk about any and everything. None of us never slept together. They're married. And me, my fact, me and their husbands are their friends and everything. I think when you're friends, I mean, when you're actually trying to date, you feel a little pulled back about what you say because you feel as though you may be judged by them because going into the relationship, they may hold that against you or they may think about it like, well, you told me when we was friends that you did X, Y, and Z. Now, here you are in this moment in time and I see the flag and I don't know if you, you know, you think you know your old ways again. So I think it becomes a little cautious, when, you know, between the, the friends and being the best friend and, you know, pursuing the relationship. I think that you should just be upfront with somebody. If you want, if you meet them and y'all hanging out, be upfront right away. Tell them mm -hmm. exactly what it is that you want. Um, and then if they curb you and put you to the side and say, hey, I just really want to be friends, then I think you should step away and allow them to just be themselves. Don't hang on the side, wasting your time being used, thinking that it's going to be a chance for you to slip in there. Uh, if y'all are friends, they're going to show that whole who they are without you know, them being, having to say, this is what I want. Because it's going to be appealing to you and you're going to want what they have. So you're not even going to have to say anything to a point that the the attraction is going to be mutual between both of y'all. Okay. Um, Lisa says maybe, maybe she is hard of hearing. Maybe God has to speak to her in a different way. Sometimes he does. Because sometimes, like Rizal said, we want what we want. And when you want what you want, you know, you're going to let people pass by because you're trying to hold out for what you think that you should have and not really not what you deserve. That's and right. That, yeah. You're not your own understanding. Okay, so Daryl says you should never settle. The person for you is out there. Patience is a virtue. Sometimes we need to use the time when we're single to work on ourselves. And I totally agree. Oh, here we go with that. All here right, we go with that. Okay, he gets, oh, he'll disagree with you on something. Not always, my brother. I don't, I don't know what he disagree with. You're gonna have to elaborate, there. I'm not sure. Um, bag on your head, Justin. Yes, Lisa. I'm so serious. You're gonna have to put that bag on their head if you, it, they have to be pleasing to the eye. Well, we got a lot of comments. I'm loving they it. They have to be. You. They have to be pleasing to the eye. If they're not pleasing to the eye, then you're gonna start resenting them. You're gonna start looking elsewhere. You. You. Your eyes are gonna be always wandering somewhere else because you're not satisfied at home. So you have to be. Men are. Men are. Um. Visual right they're visual so if there something is going on with the, their woman to where they're lacking in some area you know if they're the type of man that you know they want to see they want to look a certain way they don't start looking okay well looking elsewhere you know i can't get this at home but I, I go to work all the women at work dressed up looking nice hair done nails done then i get home she got this bonnet on her head. She got this robe on. You know, she, we go when we go out. She got on sweats and a t-shirt. You know, and granted, you know, I know women. We go through a lot of stuff. We go through a lot of stuff, but we we know how to pull ourselves together real quick. So, okay, you got to be pleasing to the eye. I'm sorry. I I agree with you because if you're not please, like you said, if you're not pleasing to the eye you do begin to wander. You start looking at what it is that you do like. And then it's like, why you keep saying that her? What are you looking at her for? Because 
she's doing or showing what it is what I like to see. And I told you what it is what I like to see. And it's not like you're comprehending that. And this is why now we're here. Because I told you I like X, Y, and Z. But you want to do C, D, and A. And I don't like C, D, and A. C, D, and A is not me. So this is why it's important during that friend time to find out what you have, who you're pursuing, who you're wanting to be with. Because you may find out that that person isn't all what you thought that they were. As my mama used to say, it ain't all cracked up as you thought it was to be, is it? Everything that glitter ain't gold. That's oh, right. Lisa says, I do not want to hold hands with someone that looks like looks like he could be her grandson, her little grandson. I'm 5'7", and I do... Lisa, are you 5'7"? Why did I think you was taller than 5'7"? She said she's 5'7". I do not think 5'11 is asking for too much. It's not, girl. It's not. If that's what you want... So she's 5'7". Would she be happy with somebody who's 5'8"? Lisa, would you be happy with somebody who's 5'8"? You know... Uh, Who's taller than you? I think that way y'all could at least be eye to eye. We have to love each other. We do. We have to. Well, you know, women wear heels. We wear heels. So, you know, once we wear heels, if you don't have an issue with me wearing heels and, you know, looking I like love heels, women heels. Looking like but you got a lot of women who don't wear heels because they never really wore them. And they like, oh, I almost broke my ankle. And now they want to stay in the fresh pair of Jordans every single time that we go out. Not appealing to me. Not appealing to you. So you want somebody to wear heels. Who's a bugaboo, Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, who who is a bugaboo? I appreciate these comments. Thank you guys so much for um, chiming in. Again, we're talking about friend zone here on Intellectual Radio. And we're just talking about some of the ways that you can be friend zone and um, some of the ways you can get out of it by being honest with your intentions with someone. And just don't hold back. If If you want to be with that person, as soon as you feel it, tell them. Because otherwise, they're going to be looking at you like, ah, oh, you was on the side, you know, wanting to be with me. You know, they may feel some type of way. So just be honest. But this, you know, this, before you just tell me, there's a lot of things that go, I always say the right person, the right place, the right time can change everything. I think it comes down to time. You can't, you know, I can't meet you today and three hours later. You know, I'm like, hey, you're the one I want to be with you. Not saying that it doesn't happen. It could. But three hours later, I, I think it's about timing. There's a right time to say, you know what? You you have to see that woman in her different seasons. You, I have to see you in that different light. I need to see you in that blue dress. For it to click in my mind, like, hey, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I never looked at her like this, but, you know, there's something different and I'm really liking it. Like maybe, you know, that's when that spark hit and then them eyes connect. Sonia <laughs> um, said, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Physical attributes fade. If you are stuck on my hair or my, or my muscles, if something happens and they are lost immediately, I have security issues. That's true. And, and you know, as you get older, you know, things just don't, they're not the same. So, you know, sometimes your priorities have to change when it comes to what it is that you're looking for. Um, no. That's true. But that's, you know, in marriage, you do stay uh, through sickness and health to love, you know, to death do us part. So no matter what happens or how you get, you can work on it doing the thing. And I, I can say this, during my wife's battle with cancer, it got to a point where she felt I'm pretty. And that wasn't the case. I made her feel like she was the most beautiful woman in the world. Even I drew on her eyebrows. I put on her lips. I did all of those, you know, those things just so she wouldn't feel less than what she thought she was. Because she still was fine and I still love her. So I think it's time. It is you know, once you spend your time with that person and you found in your heart, because the heart wants what the heart wants. Once you find that that's who you want, it's not going to make a difference of what happens for the physical, because you know the type of person that you hold there in your heart with you. Yeah, I totally agree. Get to know that person. <clears throat> Get to know that person so that, you know, you can weed out all the other stuff, the superficial stuff, and love them exactly for who they are. So, you know, 
if things do change, you know, your feelings won't waver. Um, Lisa says, no, she wears six inch heels. Lisa, you wear six inch heels? Why did I think you was taller than five eight though? Um, looks like Lisa six inch heels in her pole dancing shoes. Oh Lord, where did we go? <laughs> Somebody on the pole. Oh, we got a caller? No. <clears throat> I said okay, never mind. Um, love how you love how you're treated. Oh, she said she loved how you treated your wife during her battle. Um, you know, Rizal, you are a you are you are you cut you are rare, let me just say. Um, a lot of women that I talked to when they were going through their cancer battle ended up losing their husbands. Like they ended up separating or getting divorced because of what they were going through. And, you know, I don't know what it is, you know, with with that, you know, men kind of, you know, because you're visual, you're visual. So things are happening to that woman, and, you know, and the man is watching and, and men are fixers. So if a man can't fix it, you know, he feels like, you know, he's useless. Mm. But it's our job. You know, I, was, I, I was just bound with her to the end. I did what a husband is supposed to do. You know, you don't just give up when you're mad because things are not ideal to you or she's not looking like she's hot anymore. No, that's your wife. That's the one that you said your vows to that she's going to do no matter how she gets or what condition or circumstances are. So I just still, I still believe that. I still buy by it. But I think the problem with people is the time. Nobody want to take the time to get to know anybody because it takes too long to get there. Like, I know I'm not going to find what I had you know, that was high school level. I'm not gonna find that. So getting to know someone all over, it takes time. And at our age, we running out of time. Time is definitely against us right now at our age. So it's like, look, it's to the point like, look, you over 40, are we doing this or not? Because I ain't got time. Like, what are we doing? All right, what are we doing? Exactly. Okay, Lisa said, I thought she was taller because I always see her in the heels, but she's not short, but she, she's not real tall. Okay. Okay, Lisa. Okay, so let's 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 wrap this up. So we, we're talking about being friend zone. So what are some things that you can do so that you are not friend zone? Um Faith says she totally agrees with time. She totally agrees with that. Okay, so here are some things that you can do and just jump in there resolve. So that you will not be friend zone. So the first thing okay. that I say is to be bold in asking for what you want. The second one is um, you want to no. The, go ahead. the second one is start pursue, start pursuing um people who only want to be friends. True, because you're wasting time. Thank you. The third the third one is don't allow someone, as Rizal said, to put you on layaway. <laughs> hey. Sometimes you cash out. <laughs> so that's that. You use that your discretion if you use yeah. layaway plans. <laughs> Number four is never let someone make you their plan B. Number five is be honest with your intentions. Number six is be honest with yourself. And hey, the final one is put yourself first. Stop putting that, that person first, doing everything for them. Put your, your needs first. True. All right, Rizal, give me some words of wisdom about being friend zone. Uh, it's about being friends. Hey, how you doing? Uh, I got to go. I'm getting fed up. I'm having a whole come really, really in the middle of the show. I know. It is mama's medicine. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Your mama's medicine. <laughs> I got to continue. Okay. So, okay. Guys, Thank you. Rizal is going to give us some words of wisdom about um, being friend zoned. Um, and the crazy part is, you know, always speak from the heart. Words of when we come to friend zone. Um, also, I got to say, God is going to give you what you want. And I like the idea of what you said. Because I've done this plenty of times. Write down and know exactly what it is that you want. But be ready and be prepared for it. I don't think a lot of people prepare for it when God gives it to you. And they misuse it, they abuse it, and they let it go and it's gone. So know what it is, what you want, and how to treat it when you get it. Awesome. 
You heard that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I would say, you know, open open your mind up and don't be so close minded when it comes to different people that you meet because you never know who may be your next. Why right? you have your heart set on something else, you just never know who may be your next. So just be open when somebody approach you and mm -hmm. you know take that chance. So thank you guys for tuning in to um, Warriors Talk. Meet me right here. Noted. Um, Daryl said noted. Good advice. Uh, meet us right here next week at 6 p.m. on Intellectual Radio. Um, as always, we, we care about your opinions. And thank you so much for liking and sharing the video. This is The Biz and author and founder, Lady Rochelle of Warriors Talk, where we oh, yeah. are changing lives. Oh, yeah, shout out to I really put you up. Uh, Angie was it Angie Money last week. I enjoyed the show. I just wanted to tell her hello. Of Warriors Talk with Lady Rochelle. To find out more about Warriors Talk, follow at Warriors Talk the number one on all the social media outlets and Warriors Talk with Lady Rochelle on YouTube. Please join us next week and every Monday evening at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on IntellectualRadio.com. For Warriors Talk with Lady Michelle, where we encourage, educate, and empower 